Hello and welcome to another episode of the Art Saddle. I'm your host, Cop Kelly, and coming soon is Keenan Flannery. He's just a little late to the conversation. He was on a movie set uh, all day, and he will probably tell us all about that. But he's on the way. But for now, I do have a guest, or we do have a guest when Keenan does show up. And our guest is Lady Liz, radio host from Lincolnshire over in England. Hello, Lady Liz. How are you today? Hello, Copper. Very, uh, what a nice introduction. Nice to be here. Oh, uh, this is all new to me, but it's uh, great to uh, be on your show. Brilliant. Thanks very much for coming on. Is this your first podcast? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes it is. Yes. Very yes. good. Are you a big podcast listener? To listen, to it, I follow certain artists. I mean, uh, I do listen to some podcasts when I've got to be like kind of in the mood, or when I made a big, massive mug of tea and yeah. sit back and put my feet up. Then I tend to listen, in. Um, but not all the time. I yeah. recently I listened to a podcast. I listen to a lot of interviews that goes on, so you get the feel of it, and it's. It's something that I wouldn't mind, kind of like tipping my toes into the water, as I say. You know, I wouldn't mind giving it a chance myself. Um, I listen to a lot of uh, Darren Brown, who is Darren my Brown. idol. Mentalist. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, people say, oh, God, he's scary. He's not. He's an absolute pussy cat. I've met him quite a few times. Yeah, I say he's an absolute every time, He is. He's so extremely lovely and he always gives you that hug um i always talk about when because <laughs> i'm a hugger so I, I am one of the most might not sound it so much now but i am one of the most shyest and humblest of people extremely shy and yet if anybody out there wants a hug yeah, i'll give you a hug <laughs> um <laughs> And I, I, I kind of come across different people, different people that I met. And there's some people who are super famous and famed to the head and I'll oh, just give you a hug just because it's PR, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. And it's a kind of hug that you can feel is quite cold. It's not really meant. It's like, just I'll doing do it because it, it makes me look good. Yeah. yeah. But if you get a hug from somebody, say, like Darren, for instance, it's like now, as I'm talking about this hug, I can actually feel that hug, and it's a hug that is felt with warmth, love and affection, and really, really meant. And when you have a hug like that, and it lingers so much like now, as I'm saying about it, I can feel that hug. Mm. Although he's not here, which is the same. But yeah. Although he's not here, I can feel a hug. <laughs> It means a lot. It means extremely a lot. And he's not in the slightest bit scary. He's yeah. adorable. Absolutely uh, lovely. Really uh, lovely yeah. person. Um, a lot another of person. Specials on show on, on Channel 4. And oh, oh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. God, so. he, he's incredible. He really, really is. I love him to bits. I absolutely love the guy. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my husband, because we got. We got married last year. Um, oh, very, very my good. husband is uh, Scottish. Thank you. Uh, it's a thing that I grew up and thinking, no, I might get in a relationship, might get in a partner, might do this, might do that. And I'm definitely going to never get married. It was it was like a far away fairy tale story. You couldn't quite reach it. It looked all nice and romantic and magical and special. You can get it. I was scared. <laughs> so I never, I never branched out. And then uh, my husband, Peter, turned up. Um, uh, he was from uh, Dunfermline. And he did, he's done radio himself for years and years. And the story was behind what I do now. Um, it all came to a point about half past five in the morning on Skype to Peter and a few of the blokes from dotted around the world, like uh, America, different parts of America, saying, yeah, do it, do it. you got the gift of the gab, you can do it. And it's like, no, I thought that I could do it. I really can't do this. And it was half past five in the morning, and I said, look, guys, I've really got to go to bed because I've taken my medication. 
And I really need to, I need to go to sleep. I'm, I'm born here. I've really got to go. And Peter just turned around and said, look, this is right. Get up around about half ten, half eleven <laughs> that morning. I said, get onto Skype. I'll show you the program, what you use, all your decks, show you the ropes, and we'll get you sorted. We'll, mm. we'll get you sorted out. Okay, fine, great. Night. I think I've crashed out on the sofa. I was that tired. <laughs> I was that shattered. I thought, no, I just press out. I can't be asked. It's going back really far. So I got up that fun morning, called in on Skype, showed the program, the decks, and everything. This is how you load your music. This is how you operate the microphone, blah, blah, blah. Headset on. Uh, and he clicked live. He said, there you go. I'm off to the shops. Bye. Show <laughs> <laughs> you in the deep end. Yeah, literally. Yeah, literally. And um, <laughs> he said to me as well, he said, but beware of the bug. And he said, well, I'm going to be boring. I'm going to be, going to be boring. <laughs> I can not catch anything off radio. Um, he said, you will get the bug. You will get that thing that you want to, once you finish, you want to go straight back on. Yeah. Which is right. And it happened. And I wanted to go back on because I enjoyed it so much. My... Between leaving school and going to college and university, I wanted to do entertainment. I wanted to go into entertainment, be it radio, be it TV, be it researcher, be it office work. I wanted to go into the entertainment business. Really wanted it. And I remember applying to the local BBC. Shame on you, BBC. Um, <laughs> I wanted to join the local radio station. So if I don't care if it starts off by me making cups of tea and coffee, I can do that. I said, but if you could give me the opportunity to maybe do a bit of something on radio research or go and find the music, I said, anything. I said, apart from sweeping up, I'll do anything. Yeah. Oh, yes, well, we'll take your name and details and we'll be in touch with you soon. Well, that never happened. Uh, so I just went to college, uh, did basic MBQs, and um, did work. I, I worked as a carer. Uh, I did a residential homework. I've done shop work. Um, ran my own shop. Well, basically, ran my own, ran my own shop. In It means all that the boss just gave me the keys. says, right, you open in the morning, do the shop, clean up, hoover up put the cash in the till, and I'll pop back, get, take the keys, and you go home. Yeah. So I was kind of like running my own job and said, I'll do whatever I want. It was fantastic. And then I became a full-time carer, looking after my family, looking after my grand and my uncle for about 27 years. Right. And never regretted it. I, uh, I, um, I, don't, I don't envy these people who do caring like full-time every day because um when i did residential work it was hard it was really really tough because i found i'm such a sensitive soul really sensitive it just takes the slightest little thing and i'm like oh love really tears and everything and i thought i, I can't I, I couldn't do that because some of the things that i saw it was it was quite heart-wrenching and they'll say to you for that don't try and take your work home. And unfortunately, you do. If you're a sensitive person, you kind of do take that person home with you in your head. Yeah. And then the following morning thinking, I pray to God the raw. I hope they had a really good night. You know, and I hope they're fine. And it was it was difficult to do that. But when I was looking after my loved ones, it was a totally different kind of care plan. It was not just doing everything for them, but you had more, how do I say this it's without saying the wrong way? You had more heart and soul right, in it. Okay. Um, it was easy to take. And then when uh, my great uncle got the diagnosis, he had cancer. Oh. Um, without getting too upset, it was, it is one of the most horrible things as even if, as a friend, but as a family member, you're basically watching a time bomb go off because you don't know when it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen, it does with all of us. You know it's going to happen, but when you've got a diagnosis and told you love one's terminal, 
and there's nothing they can do, nothing will stop it, and it's inevitable. Yeah, it, it is like you're watching a time bomb, and you go to bed most nights. I would sleep downstairs because we had the bed downstairs for them and looked after them. Um, and you, you just get what the following morning thing you pray to God he wakes up, you know, and yeah. it's anybody who goes through that. I, I've had people said to me in the past for that, I don't think you fully understand. I'm thinking, I do. It's sad to say, I, I do. I do understand. And, um, and that's why I say to anybody, I, I, I'll hug anyone. I'll hug the, even the local tramp. I don't care. I'll hug the local village idiot. If he wants a hug, he'll get a hug. You know, it doesn't matter if you can make somebody comfortable um, and going through one of the darkest times in the life. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't hurt that person, and it doesn't hurt you. It's not harmful. It's in a way, in the sense of that person thinking, okay, my day is actually crap, but just for that hug or just for that smile or... Somebody said to me, you okay? Uh, do you want to go for a cup of tea somewhere? Do you want a chat? I say a lot about this on my radio show. I'll get to a point like I am now, I'm totally serious. I get to a point where I talk about my own issues because I have anxiety and depression. And I'm not afraid of it. I was afraid of it when I got my diagnosis. I was really, really scared. And I have occasional glitch where there's moments all of a sudden, I'm, my face is soaked with tears, and it's like, how do I get out of this? And I always say about it that if you know someone who is, say, like somebody in the street or a neighbour or, I don't know, a greengrocer, yeah. family member, friend, whatever, and they're just a bit out of character, not a case of sussing it out, but to say, hey, you know, are you okay? And if they don't want to talk, that's fine, that's okay. But eventually they might be thinking, you know that other day you wanted to talk, I could do with that right now. Mm -hmm. And I always say to people, reach out, just stretch out that arm and just say, hey, look, you know, I can pull you out this hole for about 24 hours, yeah. you know, but I, I can give you some sort of relief. Yeah. So you seem like a very, very caring kind of a person. So um, that's obviously very good to hear. And like, I suppose, how does that uh, translate over to your radio show? Because I know you, you get a lot of, say, smaller, smaller musicians, smaller artists, and you get, you get them on, you try to give them a platform. Like you've had, I'm not to say that Keenan is a small artist. He is a, he's a fantastic uh, artist in his it's own way. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you get, and I've heard your music as well. I uh, love your music. <laughs> thanks very much. Um, but you've had you've had Keenan on a few times, and uh, I think you've asked me to come on. But I don't think we've we've been able to uh, figure out a time that was geez, a few months ago. Now do you know why time flies. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? It does. Um, it always course, flies. But you're very caring, and you. I think you, you do. I suppose what's oh. your uh, oh speak of the devil when he arrives? It comes trouble. trouble <laughs> Keenan, can you hear us? He's coming on soon. Uh, he's just loading up. He's loading up. But you, you get the like of Keenan on and you do give them a platform. What, what, I suppose that's your, your caring nature coming out. You give artists a platform and talk to them and give them a exposure, I, I suppose you could say. It, I think it's like how you've done with me. I mean, I've just literally gabbled on and even mentioned the show so, and the show so much. But um, I do. It's, it's just one of those easy things. And I think it's helpful for if I do, when I do have a guest on. Hi, Keenan, hello. Hey, Keenan. Hello, hello, hello. Turn on your, um, your hello. microphone. Hello, hello, hello. I didn't want to interrupt while you were. <laughs> we yeah. were just hello, talking about it you popped up. Hello. <laughs> it's me. I knew. I knew he was talking about me. It I is waited. burning. <laughs> How are you, my darling? I'm fine, sweetheart. How are you, my I'm little... well. I'm <clears throat> apologies that I am late. Uh, I... I've been walking my little butt off in the past two days, so I sprinted home from the country um, <laughs> to be here. I didn't run. I was in a car. But the car was, I, probably, I probably would have been quicker running, to be honest, fuck's sake. But um, I'm here now, and so I hope they didn't miss too much. So, oh, that's, that's me long going off. Stop doing that for me. Yeah. 
uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We were just talking about Lady Liz's show and how she's had yourself on and other musicians that get them on to. She's she's telling us about her family and she's being a carer and she's obviously a very caring person and she has she gets musicians on and gives them a platform and gives them some exposure. Um, of course, you you've been on Keenan yourself. What's what's your experience like with Lady Liz? And your show is 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 it called the Lady Lady Liz Show? Is that the name of it's it? It's called the Lady Liz Show. Yes. There you go. <clears throat> And it's a, it is the best radio show in the world. Hey. Um, he had to take medication after his copper. He really did. He, to, he, he you know, <laughs> seriously depressed. I mean, drug help him. I Let's find uh, <laughs> uh, me and um, Lady Liz um, were quite two and the same. Um, we could talk the ear off you. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> But the thing I love about um, you and I loved about your show is you're so welcoming and you just have a warm presence about you. That, oh, thank you. Um, and I think it's wonderful. And I, I, um, in terms of yours, like what drives you to do your show every week? Do you know, because it seems like to me, one of the things is just the passion you have for hearing new art and hearing new music. And it surprisingly, you don't get that a lot. You get that a lot less than you think nowadays. And it's quite hard for upcoming musicians to kind of, we keep getting doors closed on our faces. Mm. So it is a breath of fresh air to get someone as wonderful as yourself. But what, what drives you to um kind of do the Lady Liz show? Uh, medication and a massive mug of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Gives you the pain. I couldn't, I, I couldn't have asked for a better answer. <laughs> um, what drives me to do the show? Um, it's something I've mentioned earlier to Topo was... Between leaving school and college, I wanted to go into entertainment, be it a stage, TV, radio, anything like that. I wanted to do entertainment, really did. And I remember in my careers lesson in the last year of school, this teacher came up to me and said, what do you want to do when you leave school? I said, an office work, because I'm fairly good with computers until just a few, about half an hour ago. It's like... Phone worked, AirPods didn't work, Copper couldn't hear me so well, so we had to <laughs> go on the laptop and we got big microphone. This I've, I've introduced Copper to Big Mick. This is this is a microphone. It's big. Yeah, it's big a microphone. Mick the microphone. Big Mick, yes. <laughs> yeah, I just had to clarify that if you're wondering what the hell it was in the picture. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, we we actually don't do video for this podcast, so people are going, what? What the hell is she talking? So I'm glad we, we, we'll clear it up. She's talking about a microphone. Mm. Get your head out of the gutter, right? <laughs> Disgusting animals she's talking about. Yeah. Big, massive mick, the microphone, right? <laughs> yeah. So don't be thinking about anything else. But anyway, do continue. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> and, I, uh, I'm going to grab my cup of tea. Hold on one second. You gotta go with a cup of tea. Melt two sugars, please. A nice big cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> well prepared, Keenan, huh? <laughs> you can't uh, do yeah, well prepared. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, so leaving leaving school was uh, I made an application to the local BBC. Um I never heard of being back for them. So I thought, okay, that's it done. Gone down the drain, did shop work, worked in a residential home, and then kind of ran, a, ran my own shop. Basically, the boss just gave me the keys and just said, get on with it, just do all the money checkout, and I'll pick it up when end of hours. And um, I remember I was 18 at the time running this shop. It's only, and, only a few years ago. Yes, yes, yeah. true, yes, yeah. Don't worry, the checks in the post for that. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was 18 and my wages was one pound an hour not very much difference to what it is now is it really no. um, <laughs> what would that walk out today now That's you're looking at Peyton's uh, now to be honest yeah still one ages pound. ago so she's, only, she's only 19 now she's still one pound yeah so <laughs> God, I love these. That's another check in the post. There you um, go. <laughs> For one you time, you telling us over. We're both after making a pound. Be on, be on. <laughs> um, but it, it, was, it was an experience. It was great. It, it was fantastic because you just felt like, I'm your own boss, you know, brilliant. I was only working like a, a, 
a pet food shop. So you can imagine the smells that was in there was like dog food, cat food, and not things that are worth to be sold. <laughs> not really. Um, no no lovely food. steaks lying around. No, well, no medium no, rare steaks, no, a bit of gravy, uh, maybe. No, there there is pig's ears, and it's like anybody came in, do you have a pig's ear? Like, I pray to God there's a set of tongs because I'm not picking up that pig's ear. No way. Oh, uh, no. Um, and then it wasn't kind of look really, it was the kind of look that nobody wants in life. I was speaking to Copper a few minutes ago about it. I, I've done, I became a carer for 20, 27 years, and I looked after my grand and my great uncle. Um, great uncle got uh, cancer, and it's just like watching a time bomb. Really, really hard. So for anybody who's going through that, I can only sympathise. Um, I'm a person who, I'm a hugger. I, I'll hug anybody. I'm not saying that I'll hug the likes of, Boris Johnson right now. Um, <laughs> that's a different kind of hug, um, <laughs> really, <laughs> for what he's doing. Um, but now I'll, I'll hug anybody, but I am the most, I'm really, I'm a humble person. It's like doing this tonight. I really, it's so nice to be on the show. It's really lovely, guys. And, mm. um, but I, I'm one of the most incredibly shy to people, you know. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll go up to anybody. Tell us about your radio show itself. Um, how long have you been doing about the radio, radio show? show? Actually, we just celebrated our fourth birthday last Tuesday. Yeah. Fantastic. So we've been going for four years. Four years, thank you. Thank, uh, four years corrupting the world. Yeah. Which is <laughs> and, and tell fantastic. me, um, like, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have always thought about, <clears throat> excuse me, always thought about kind of, Taking the dream of starting their own radio show or something that they're in, like maybe a podcast, the way me and Copper kind of jumped in and we did this. Do you have any advice for anyone of, you know, any any background, any age, whatever that's going, I'd like to do what Lady Liz is doing? Do you have any advice for them? Uh, the only advice is don't do a Skype call with somebody at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> it's, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Um, because at the time I was, he was just a good friend who's now my husband. And we was only just saying about this one, we talking really half past five in the morning on Skype to Peter and two or three other guys dotted around America and everything. Saying, oh yeah, you can do this, Liz. You've got the gift of the gab. You can do this. And I was like, can't do this. And it just ended up by half past 10, never o'clock the fuck that morning, wake up, Skype call. Peter showed the program, the decks, microphone, headset, how to wire everything up, how to put the music on, when to talk, all, all the bits that you need to know. And he, picked, he just pressed live. He said, there you go, I'm off to the shops. No! Mm -hmm. Do this to me! And it literally just took me in the deep end, like Topper said earlier. Um, but I haven't regretted it since. Mm. And then I got the bug. The, the and bug. I wanted... Yes, yeah. The bug is <laughs> it's, it's real because I, I got that as well for the last year or so. I've been doing podcasts. I've done, I don't know, 70 odd podcasts or whatever. And you, you get that bug. You get that, oh, let's work hard and get it out there. And it feels great to finally, you know, edit a podcast and, you know, mix it and send it out and put it out on Spotify or whatever. And it's like, oh, it's out there now for people to enjoy, hopefully, give or take. Um, yeah. but... <laughs> it, it, it is so a fantastic, is real, so like, yeah. like you said about advice, and the only advice I can say is that I, I'm not the, I'm not the most confident of people. I, I swear by it, I, hand on heart, I am not a confident person at all. <laughs> I freak out at most things, but I'm not confident. You don't come across that way. You, you come across very confident and full of chat and... Yeah, full of gabble. Chat and charm. Chat and charm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I, I think one of the biggest things I was picking up is a lot of people that get into this field or this industry or whatever, or whatever you're doing, if it's creative, there is, there is that initial jump that you have to make. It's almost like you're on like a diving board or like you're going skydiving. Like if you don't jump, like the only way is back. You know, the only yes. way is where you came from. If, the minute you take that leap, 
there is a level of like, especially when it comes to like running something successful, there is a level of luck, there's a level of time, patience, hard work. But there is also just a level of just like, a lot of it's out of your hands. As long as you're doing it and you're enjoying what you're doing and you're after taking that leap. So to enjoy the journey. And I think, you know, you've done it. Um, we've done it with this podcast and our, our own careers as well. Do you know what I think? Um, people need to make, people just need to go, not listen to so many other people around them because there's so many people out there that will put you down. Do you yeah. know, what? What's, why would you, enough people will do that. So why should you do it to yourself? Do you know? Yeah, I, I've had that. And I think what helps is just a mixture of music. I mean, I'll, I'll play anything for anything from, I don't know, heavy metal to a cat playing on the fiddle on a tin roof. <laughs> you know? <laughs> just... I, I'll have some metal. Look at these metal guitars. I'll have some metal music for you sometime to put on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but What's no, your go-to it's... type of music? What's my go-to? Kind of music. Oh. What for? What do I uh, kind of relax to? Uh, I like a lot of uh, Rufus Wainwright. I like a lot of. Um, oh God, you're asking me now. Uh, here's, here's, a, here's a good question, right? And this, oh. this, this, it also is a big question. If you have to say tomorrow, we said the Lazy Liz show is going quite exclusive. You can only play one genre of music right mm. what 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 do you do okay. panic for a start um, <laughs> <laughs> i just say can we edit that status for a mixture of genre because i haven't got a clue <laughs> give me I, I you have your, <clears throat> any top three maybe 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 we give you a bit of a broader classical Okay, that's yeah. an interesting choice. Yeah, very nice. Uh, country. Oh, yeah. Uh, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah fuck yeah. off. Um, like them doors and throw the lights down low. And I think it's a lot of uh, what I call urban music. Although I live in the countryside, and um, I'm daytime and country. Night, I'm city night life. When it's, I, I like that music when it creates that image in your head, like uh, city night life. All the shops are all lit up. It's been raining. You're walking up the high street. Bit of a chill in the air. There's buses coming past, and you put the air brakes, and you get the smell of the oil. That's my nightlife image. I think it's because I was born in the city. Mm -hmm. So that's really instilled in my heart. But I've got, if anybody asks me for that, what do I choose best? I said, well, I've got the best of both worlds because yeah. I was born in the city and yet I live in the country now. So, Liz, so, I know you're, you're short on time. It's coming up to, you're, you're nearly going live. So, uh, this mm. being a primarily a music news podcast, I want to talk about a topic that we can possibly expand upon yes. a little bit. Uh, so, um, Sting has sold his songwriting catalogue for an estimated $300 million. And this kind of follows uh, a suit of other musicians like uh, Bob Dylan, uh, Neil Young, Fleetwood Mac, Shakira, John Lennon. Well, John Lennon was dead, but you know, his, his estate would have sold it on. Uh, but basically this means these artists are selling all the rights to their music to a companies, to these companies, uh, I think Hyp Hypno what's it, Hypnosic, oh, I can't remember the name of it now, uh, I have it here in front of me somewhere. Hip, 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 hypnosis, hypnosis. Or something. That's the name. Of it, hypnosis. Yeah. That's hypnosis. one of the. Yeah, that's one of the, the company names. These are the, these companies are buying up all these catalogs from musicians, and they basically own those that music for future use. So they can put it in the movies, ads, streaming platforms, wherever they want to put it, and they don't have to get permission from the artists or anything like that. And the artists don't get royalties anymore because they've basically sold out their music for a lump sum. Um, what is your, your thoughts on this? Because I remember you asked me, did they do it for charity? Yeah, I mean, the Sting has obviously made the Sting, haven't he? Um, <laughs> sorry, really bad um, excuse me, Tom. Um, yeah, because, I mean, all right, I, I can understand if it's, the, they've obviously sold the rights and everything to, well, basically, let's face it, it's for their pension, isn't it? Um, yeah. It's a retirement but, fund, yeah. 
Yeah, me being a charitable person, cleaning's heard a lot of that. Um, you would have thought like a percentage would say, oh, but we'll give a certain percentage to such and such, and that'll yeah. just help them a bit. Oh, well, you'd like to think that they might, that. they might, um, you know, donate some of it, but you never know, you never know. No, because we, we did discuss earlier, Keenan, whether or not I should sell my AirPods for one pound. <laughs> I mean, that's one pound that's going towards my prophetic pension when I get old. When I get really old. <laughs> <laughs> but this is... Well, well, I'll, I'll, buy your, I'll buy your earbuds. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose this so, kind of leads on to the, um, I suppose, bigger conversation of, like, uh, there's reports recently that people, when they're streaming music, they are far more likely to go to older music and stream it rather than actually explore and find new music which doesn't help the likes of myself or Keenan because we want them to try to just discover our music. But you do find yourself when you go onto Spotify or Apple, you're going to go, I'm going to stick on an 80s playlist and let it play. You know, it's just easier and, and you know, it's, it's more convenient it's, and you know the songs. Um, I, I, suppose I think it, it you're saying that we're all, musicians. we was all brought up on like... Uh, eight tapes and cassettes and CDs yeah. and a square disc that's never been seen ever again. Uh, um, mini discs, yes. Mini discs, yeah. I have a yeah. fondness for mini discs. I had one of them. They're brilliant, brilliant altogether. But, see, that now it's everything downloaded. Unless you could find that specific artist, I think this is where a lot of agents, in a way, are quite messing up because the artists like you guys, you do such hard work and finalise it and you polish your work to mm. the nearest perfectionist point you can make it. And there's an agent sitting there thinking, oh, yes, well, we could sell uh, 100,000, but you're only, get a, you're only going to get a percentage. And it, they're just sitting there on their backsides and typing and emailing other agents and radio stations. And it's... It's the artist that, in the end, that I feel sorry for. It's yeah. it's always the artist, way, I guess, the um, the pennies out of the pound. Let's say. Yeah, it, it, it's like it's like if you've got a racehorse. If you look at it like this, it's like if you've got a racehorse, and you're told you can only feed that horse straw or hay or grain or grass. That, that's, a, that's a pennies that's a pennies for that poor old horse yeah. to run around that field so many times jumping over hedgerows and yeah. carrying somebody on the back which they're probably not used to yeah. and getting whipped do you see yeah getting whipped yeah exactly it's kind of it's a strange innuendo but it's yeah. I know Keenan's into that kind of thing so but but <laughs> Keep in mind, this is a family show. Um, <laughs> yeah, this, this no, is just me. This no. is the funnest thing from a family show right here. Yes, we've got you in. We've trapped you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> what I think, like... I want to be in a genre. When you go mm. to an agent and you have a song, they don't go, this is Keenan Flannery or this is Lady Liz or Copper Kelly. This, they go, this is a folk kind of song. Let's push in. Let's push for all the Spotify folk playlists. You know, it's gone are the days of like the 70s and 80s where people were just different. When someone was different, they were successful. If you're different now, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage because you can't, slot yourself into a category. If you're very typically pop, you actually might do better than someone that's kind of pop but also doing their own thing because, you know, Spotify is so okay. As Papa said, 80s playlists, mm. 70s playlists. Then you have indie playlists. You have folk playlists. You know, if I can slot you into a folk playlist, great. great but if news. you're not really folk, but you're not really country, but you're not really this or that or that, mm. There's nowhere for you to sit. And even though you might be the most unique musician out there, extremely talented, you know, people don't want to, like, the people that will want to hear your music never will because no one will ever put the time in to support it because they're like, you're, it's basically, they're taking a risk with you. 
Do you know, at least if they go to someone that sounds like David Guetta, you know, and David Guetta's doing well, it sounds like Ed Sheeran, at least they're like, this isn't as much of a risk. So I think that's the problem with like Spotify and the underlining issue with kind mm. of agents and kind of pushing to that particular genre. Yeah. But, um, I, I, I could be wrong. I, I feel how, how your guys' music is, to, to me, is not just folk or country or Irish or Welsh or whatever. It's easy listening. I mean, I'm going to reflect just quickly on to uh, your song, Keen, and what you launched when I interviewed you on my show, um, Manchester Streets. I love it. I love it. It's fab. I listen to it quite often. <clears throat> I'll send that check over to you. So I will. I, d- <laughs> just, just, send re- just send a return to sender. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I love it because some of these songs, I mean, it has been for some time now, I can't. I can't justify the point of where, so, you know, like like me, I have a radio station, so if anybody requests a certain song and I have not got it on my system, I have to double-check it's a radio edit version because I don't want to be on a station where you'll say that you can't say the F-bomb, you can't say the Z-bomb, you can't do oh, anything yes. like that. Keenan has the F-bomb you know, in that have, song. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be careful and it's like, no, I you, don't. Well, it's not that song. Which song? You do have a song. No, no, you all did. No, I dropped you have, it in a different song. F- it's a different song. I, I've been condemned. As the I've one been I condemned. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> but I put a massive E beside that, like in brackets, ah, like explicit. Yeah. So that's uh, a silent F. So it becomes a massive E. <laughs> yes. Right, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know what to look out for. Then. <laughs> I'm just yes, looking dear. at the time and I know you're going live very soon. So... We'll wrap up the show and let you let you let you go. But in the mean, just before we go, tell the people where can they find you? How can they, f- they listen to the Lady Liz show? You can find me behind the local bike shed, uh, down in the street. No, no, sorry, no, that's a different question, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you can find the details about the Lady Liz show over on where everywhere. Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. You can listen back to the shows on Mixcloud. Uh, just search. And we're also on YouTube. I mean, Keenan's seen some of the, the stuff I have to let me well go through for the team for charity. <laughs> it's disgusting. Um, absolutely terrible. And thankfully, it's come to a stop. I think that I'm using the excuse of there's been a pandemic, so we can't do it. You know, mm. close proximity. No. But there's also a fear of the stuff what they use as well. Um, but frankly, it hasn't happened for the past two years. And I pray to God it's not going to happen again. We found different things that we can do, like, I don't know, cycling a thousand miles within a week, which I've done. That's amazing. Oh, well. Yeah, amazing. That's phenomenal. We did that for Parkinson's. We raised about 200 quid, which one not too bad. Great stuff. Um, That's fantastic. And uh, the, the best thing about it was I could... I could cycle and I could stay completely dry and clean and then take a break because your bum gets terribly numb after five or ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and you stand up and you walk, you walk around like John Wayne lost his blooming horse. You know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we just do a lot of charity work. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's, I'll put links that's in incredible. the description. Just carry on. And I think, um, I think, you're one of the most uh, um, careless, uh, I think that's the word, careless when you care for other people, like yourself. Am I getting that right? I think so. Uh, Is that I the right careless. word? Careless. Am I using it? Uh, I'm not sure. That's the, I think that's the opposite uh, of what you mean. Some... Selfishless. Selfishless. Yeah. It's like, you're selfishless, yeah? That's... Sometimes uh, but, but when Is that the word I'm close? <laughs> 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 Look, all I'm saying is I think you're phenomenal. You've been super supportive to me and to many other artists and to Copper as well. And I want to say you take re- uh, you take requests and you take submissions to your show. So if there's any musicians out there, how can they get their music on the Lady Liz show? Uh, easy. Uh, they can email me and the team. Uh, and the email address is theladylizshow at gmail.com. That's theladylizshow at gmail.com. Nice um, and snappy. Nice and quick. And it's, straight to the point. 
<laughs> straight to the point. The That's lazy great. little show. That's right. At I'll make sure to put that in the description. But just to quickly wrap up, to let you away and do your live show. Um, if you want to follow us, the Art Saddle Podcast, go to the Art Saddle Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. We have a Patreon where we'll record a bonus episode now after Lady Liz goes and starts her show. Myself and Keen will stay on. We'll chat for nerd a little bit. And you can you find will. it over on our patreon.com forward slash the Art Saddle Podcast. Of course, Keen, and where can they find you and your music? Oh, sorry, you cut out there. Um, yeah. Where, where can they find me and my music? You can find my music and myself on Keenan Flannery Music on Instagram, Facebook, um, Keenan Flannery on YouTube. Look up either Keenan Flannery or Keenan Flannery Music. you find me there. You can find, um, yeah, that's everything on Spotify, all the usuals. And um, Spotify yeah. is a dirty word on this podcast now, though, isn't it? Dirty. You <laughs> dirty. fucking band camp. <laughs> Go on to but, my um, band camp and podcast. Uh, Buy my t shirt and my used underwear so that's and all it. that stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, Great stuff. <laughs> and uh, you can find me at Copper Kelly Music on all the usual places. But look, Lady Liz, thanks so much for coming on. I know you have to shoot off now and record your show, or not record, you do it live, of course, not like us, we record it. I do thanks live, so yeah, much for man. coming on. And hopefully, I'll chat to you again. Thank soon you for having future. me. It's been an absolute honour. It's been a an pleasure. absolute pleasure to have you on. And uh, hopefully, uh, sometime in the near future, I can join you guys again. Maybe on a, a weeknight or whenever we did a podcast yes. when I'm not doing the show. Okay. And then we can have <laughs> a much more back. lengthy chat and talk about all sorts of things. <clears throat> and and we'd be sure to jump on your show as well if you yeah. then if you would be so kind to have yes, us. Yes, have... most certainly. Anytime. You are both welcome. Anytime you want to jump on, if you've got a new song being launched, uh, send me an email, message me, you know how to get hold of me, and um, we'll get you on. There's no doubt about that. Brilliant. Well, look, Brilliant. we hope My the show goes was great. A pleasure to have you on, Lady Liz. Absolutely. It's lovely to see you both. It's so lovely. Thank you so much. Love to you both. Thank you very much. And to all our all listeners, the best, we right? see look you again. Bye. And all the best, all the listeners. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.